racing has been go going on for at least a couple of years, but I think that you were a little bit late to the game. Uh, that is true. I, uh, I joined actually just recently, end of last year. Uh, Heini has been swifting already for a year or two. This winter we, uh, we figured out that we will take the Swift into our training program. What was the reason for bringing, bringing it on right now? Originally January, February was planned to be a, a bike block and uh, we decided that uh, uh, we will try what gains we will get through Swift racing and this would be also uh, kind of uh, giving a bit more motivation at these times when, when races are cancelled. Well, which one did come first? The idea to do Swift races or the knowledge that, that we have our own team club races in Swift? This was actually a combination of, of uh, both of those uh, aspects. So, uh, as said, with quite many uh, uh, teammates' uh, uh, training plans, the January, February was, was planned to be kind of bike block and uh, Swift racing is, is, uh, seems to be a good way to, to handle it. And at that time uh, we talk about uh, uh, in the team that uh, why not putting our own uh, Swift racing cup to race uh, together. So we had our own SKB Swift Cup. Uh, could you explain how, how was it planned? Uh, yeah, one of our team members actually organized the, the, the whole cup. And uh, he came up with this idea that we will have five races, uh, one race uh, each week on Thursdays, evenings. To, to get uh, everybody on board and uh, there was actually a nice combination of five different type of uh, races so the courses were uh, a bit different so we had a uh, couple of sprint, sprint races a couple of uh, courses with, with uh, bigger hills and then in the end so those were around 45 uh, up to bit more than one hour races and then the final one was uh, up to two hour very hard uh, race with uh, a lot of climbing. Although you said that uh, Swift racing is, is one of a good way to, to take care of the bike block as you said but still putting races uh, in the middle of the training season uh, were you scared of that because it was you, it was Haney and actually quite a lot of your athletes doing the same thing? Yes, that is true. That um, Normally power training plans are much more uh, controlled. So this was a, a risk. And, uh, but we wanted to take it and, and see that, that, uh, that what happens. Anyway, during the races, uh, because these were most of them longer than 40 minutes. Anyway, the, the power levels will quite nicely uh, fit into the uh, upper threshold level, which anyway is the main target for bike block. So there's no bad feelings uh, towards our teammate, we can call him the captain, who, who organized this setup? No, I think this was a uh, uh, nice Nice coincidence and at the same time quite many of our team members actually uh, were able to get into the world of Swift and uh, now they know what, what is it all about and uh, including me and uh, I think it at least we got a lot of motivation to, to uh, train or race every Thursday evenings. Yeah, I think we have something like 60 members in, in the SKB team and in the biggest cup race there was almost like 30 participants so that was that was huge that was that was true 30 to uh, 20 to 30 uh, participants in the races and uh, it was nice that actually we knew everybody on the board so uh, it was really competing against others which was uh, everybody was able to push 
bit more up to their uh, kind of uh, limits. Yes, and actually I heard uh, when the first, I think, first or second race in the SKB Cup that some of you were doing another race too. That was happening on Tuesdays? Uh, yes, at the same time we, we combined our forces with uh, another local uh, triathlon club and we joined this uh, uh, worldwide uh, VTRL uh, league. So uh, that was those races were also happening once once per week on Tuesday evenings, quite late, which was a bit, bit challenging to us to get kind of uh, 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 sleeps after the races or, or actually I think quite many of us uh, uh, didn't get any sleeps after the, after the races. But uh, yeah, we joined also uh, to that league and it lasted uh, for seven or eight weeks. So you had eight races in that league on Tuesdays and five races with the SKB on Thursdays. That is true, yeah. And on January and February. Yep. Yeah, okay. So after these eight weeks, what's your feeling about the, about the races? Did it uh, bring the gains you wanted? Uh, well, we will see the, the, the actual gains in the fitness later, but the the feeling about the swift racing and, and in general racing in, with, with trainer, uh, I think uh, racing with, uh, with team members and, and the, the kind of your, with your friends is very motivating. So I think it was, uh, that was pushing you to jump into the, uh, onto the bike every, every Tuesday and, and, and Thursday. Uh, also, I felt that it's, it's actually quite stressful for your, uh, for your legs and, and body to, to, to race, especially with the trainer, because you have this uh, kind of uh, uh, magnetic break all the time, uh, forcing you to push against it. So it's, it's completely different for the muscles compared when you are riding outside. I was a technical help for my wife in, in a couple of the races she was doing in the SK, SKB Cup and I, I must say that although the Swift looks awesome and mainly works really well but all of the technical stuff, you have the trainer, you have a heart rate monitor, you might have a separate power meter uh, and of course the bike itself and your computer or, uh, or a tablet, it's, it's, it, there is quite a lot of stuff and of course because there are many many different devices from different manufacturers, there's a lot to go wrong. Uh, that's true and I think that's the main, main thing to remember when, when you are racing in, in Zwift that this is a computer game and there is a lot of uh, bits between you and the, the, the guy in the, uh, behind these other avatars. So uh, I think that's the, you can't, you are not competing uh, purely against uh, your friends or other competitors. You are competing with your avatar and, and you mentioned all these things what, what affects to this uh, the performance in the game. That's, that, that's most definitely true. I think it would be helpful to uh, take a deep dive to one of the races and look at some numbers. Sure, let's do that. Training peaks, and we can see that one of the SKB races was done in the Richmond circuit. Tero, could you talk a little about the numbers? Sure. So this is snapshot from my training peaks. Uh, as we can see, the the race uh, included four laps, and every lap we did uh, three quite steep, hard uh, uh, 
climbs uh, where the, the numbers went all the way to uh, one minute maximum. And then in between there was uh, a short recovery of group ride uh, parts. Uh, so all together this was uh, 12 times uh, short 30 seconds up to one minute uh, hard climbs. And here we can see also my average power number. So that was 333 watts maximum being 755. I think that was the, the very last push before the finish line. And then the more normalized power was uh, 364. Awesome. Can you talk a, a bit about the power zones? where the workout or actually the race was done? Sure. So here we, here we can see the, the heart rate and and the, the, the power, uh, power levels. Uh, and uh, as we can see here, the heart rate has been all the time on my upper threshold level or above. So John Poor being, uh, being my threshold. Uh, Thres upper threshold and uh, if we check the power levels uh, same way so my upper threshold uh, is somewhere around 350 watts so I have been spending here during this race around 30 minutes uh, around threshold or above so this has been a very stressful hard race and uh, if we think about the, the recoveries during the race, so for example, uh, I was spending only five minutes uh, spinning on zone one, meaning for me under 180 watch. So basically, if this, this would be a normal structured workout, this would look quite different. You would probably have one or two zone zone bars quite high on the upper side and then you would have clear recovery periods but because this is a race it basically is almost almost flat uh, that is true so if we think about the usual uh, uh, normal threshold uh, structure threshold workout we would see some 40 minute uh, on zone four and then uh, 20 minute uh, uh, recovering on, on zone one so, uh, and then we would actually separate VO2 max level workouts, uh, which would mean something like four minute, uh, four by four minutes, and then recovering four minutes in between those intervals. And now what we can see here is that we are actually uh, seeing all those numbers in this same, same workout and uh, without any proper uh, recovery. So basically this is a kitchen sink workout in a way which is n neither good or bad. But of course the big question is uh, did you gain any fitness? Exactly and that, that was the, the, the target here to see that how this kitchen sink type of uh, uh, racing uh, workouts will, will affect to, to the the fitness so that is what we will see in the next episode when i'm visiting to lab awesome so we will see you in the next episode episode number six yes